Hey, um, I haven't done a face-to-face -face video in a minute, right? So um, here I am. I can't remember the last time I've done one of these. Um, but for this video, I want to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind as of late. Um, really not as of late. I've thought about this for a while, actually, but I just never really knew how to verbalize it properly until now. And um, yeah, like I said, I haven't made one of these types of videos in a while, so I'm here to put this out there on the internet and see what people say. And uh, plus, you know, I was having some discussions with people in Discord and on Twitter and whatnot. And, um, you know, all, all those sorts of talks really consolidated my thoughts and really, you know, like, cleared my head a little bit um, on how to how on how I want to say this. But um, I remember when I first joined YouTube in 2013, I came across really this line of thinking of, uh, you know, 2013, 2012, where, um, you know, people are saying, like, why do you like characters that are just strong? You know, why, why, like, why, why does the strength of a character matter in terms of, like, their actual writing, so to speak? And, yeah, at the time I understood it, and I still understand it now in 2021. You know, it's been eight years since I first joined YouTube, and, you know, I don't really look at this as a fucking career or anything. I just... Make shit and I put it on here and people respond and that's what it, it, it is what it is, right? Like, it's not that I look at this too seriously or anything like that, but, you know, I, I was, it's not that I've been thinking about it since then. I was just, as of late, like the last couple of years, I've been really trying to, you know, my, my opinions on things have changed. I've reread stuff. I rewatch stuff. You know, think the way I think about things are different, um, about anything really is different. So th that's why this video is being made now. It's be, I'm here to explain why. Um, or how a character's, the strength of a character can actually matter. And while I was writing the script for this video, I also, this also led into a discussion about the pain and trauma of a character, what people consider good writing, and, you know, why, why people like certain characters more than other characters, right? But uh, the first thing that I want to start off with is, uh, at least for the for the series that I or at least for the type of characters that I generally like right now I like a whole bunch of characters I'm, it's not that I just limit myself to one archetype of character and I say like um, these are the only types of characters that I like that's not how it works right um, there may be types of characters that are similar with one another that may that you know may share traits with one another that I tend to like right and of course I'm talking about battle loving characters right like I, I love characters that can beat the shit out of each other that can throw hands that are just fucking strong as hell. Because that, sh and quite honestly, this is the entire point of the video. That shit is fucking cool and awesome. And that's enough of a reason to like them. But I'll go more in depth into that later. But, um, uh, yeah, so I, I like any type of character, right? I like any type of character. And, um, but for the most part, the, the characters that I, the most common type of character that I like are those that enjoy fighting and combat and, you know, like to prove themselves and, 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 and improve themselves in combat and you know that just people who really like fighting in general or who have a knack for fighting or who have a taste for fighting and you know if i were just to list off lift up uh, list lift off list off my 10 favorite characters right uh goku gintoki kenshiro uh yusuke uh spike jotaro jotaro uh guts uh kiryu snake and musashi right uh, in no particular order all those 10 characters that I listed, right, who are from manga and anime and video games, two of them are from video games, uh, they have a knack for blood, they have a knack for fighting, they have a knack for liking fighting, and um, in some respect, they, they all have, you know, different intensities and degrees of liking fighting, but that's pretty much like the, 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 the common thread that they all share, right, like one, at least one of them, that they all like fighting and all of them are pretty much like the best or are fairly strong in their own right, so... I, I, I like that type of character and that, that not only does that extend does that extend to that type of character those are the types of series that I mainly consume a, a lot of the anime and manga that I've watched are generally you know battle series and especially I would say battle shonen right and of course you know the battle seinen I would I would consider personally I would consider berserk a battle seinen because there's a lot of fighting in that manga um you know, even something like uh, Vagabond, you know, Vagabond is seen by many as like a philosophical manga, and it is, and it, it more so is about Musashi, um, the man, more so than it is Musashi, the warrior, which is also true. But at the end of the day, with the thing that Musashi is most famous for, and the thing that people are most interested about Musashi 
the, the, the thing that I'm most interested in about Masashi is that the fact that he was basically the sa- the sword saint god of all of Japan. And he founded, you know, the two sword uh, fighting style for samurai or ronin, wh- whatever you want to call them. Um, that was basically him. And so the, the mystique and the allure of that character really comes from his combat prowess, right? And not to say that the other parts of his character that we've seen in the manga aren't interesting. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the draw of that character. The draw of that character is that Musashi Miyamoto is a strong character. This guy is capable of fighting people and he's capable of winning. And that's kind of like the whole crux of this video, which is why it's perfectly okay to like a character for the simple fact of them being strong and then being capable of being competent in a fight. You don't you don't need a bigger reason. If you want a bigger reason, sure. I mean, like I said, this is fighting and combat isn't the only reason to like a character. But again, this is what I'm saying about Battle Shonen and Battle Seinen. Battle Shonen and Battle Seinen, ultimately, what is the what is the point of these series, right? What is the what is the main draw of these series? What what is the the resolution of conflicts in these series, right? And those are battles, those are fights. And even in Shonen, say like One Piece, which may not be as battle centric as Dragon Ball or Hokuto no Ken or Yu Yu Hakusho or even something like Roroni Kenshin, right? Battles still do happen. Battles are still a very core, not they, I would even arguably say they're just as important to One Piece as they are the, the adventure aspect of that series. And basically what I'm trying to get at is all these series that I listed at the end of the day are battle shonen. One Piece is what you would call a battle shonen, despite being heavily praised, as it should be, for its adventure. But at the end of the day, the entire thing, the, the draw of One Piece is going to be eventually its fights. And especially if you read One Piece, there are so many things that we are anticipating in One Piece. We are anticipating Luffy fighting... I'm not going to spoil for some of you that may not be caught up, but we're not going to. Some of us are anticipating Luffy versus Blackbeard, Luffy versus Sakazuki, uh, Zoro versus Shiri, Zoro versus Mihawk, like wh- whatever fight that you can think of. What Garp's going to do, Dragon. We're all so enamored and interested, and we want to know more about these characters' powers. Of course, their backstory and everything, but because this is a battle shonen, a battle shonen at the end of the day, it's about the fights and it's about battles. And those are the things that you have to deliver on, right? So naturally, in series like these, the strongest characters are typically always going to be at least some, you know, some of the, some, most of the readers or watchers' favorite characters. Now, they may be ranked differently. I'm not saying that they're one, they're five, they're ten, or whatnot. But what I am trying to say is because the the series that they are in are battle shonen, right? Whatever character you want to pick from whatever battle shonen. Their ultimate role in that story is it's going to the story is ultimately going to lead them to some sort of fight. It's going to lead them to some sort of fight for all the character writing that you can do for all. I mean, which is good. I'm not saying that again. I'm not trying to. Um, uh, what's the what's the phrase I'm looking for? I'm not trying to um, uh, devalue those things. I'm not trying to devalue the personality or what an author may put in the personality of a character or what they may put in the past of a character or whatnot, right? But ultimately, the function of these characters in the, in the grand scheme of things in the story is that they are going to be led to a fight. And they're going to fight someone or something. And the outcome of that battle is going to be super important to the story. That's just how it is. That's, it. That's how it is for any battle series out there, no matter how battle-centric that series is. No matter how battle-centric that series is. And so basically, what am I trying to get at here? Because these are battle series, ultimately, that's why the characters, not only the characters' strength matters, but the characters' win-loss record also matters, right? And exactly what I'm saying, right? The anticipation of, say, something like One Piece, which is not as fight-oriented as Hakusho or Dragon Ball or Fist of the North Star, the anticipation of that series is contributed to by Luffy's future meetups with Sakazuki and Blackbeard and a host of various other characters like Shanks and, you know, who, 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 you name a, a, any other kind of character in, you know, in that big series under the sun and you'll see what I'm getting at. So it's because these are battle shonen, it's because these are battle series that fighting matters, the win-loss record of a character matters, and their strength matters. This, this, all, and this all leads into the entire buildup of their character. 
And another thing that I want, I also want to make this uh, uh, similarity too. In boxing or combat sports, right? In boxing, MMA, whatever you, karate, taekwondo, whatever you want to call it. The allure of a fighter, right? When you're watching something or you're, you're watching a fighter, or you say like, I'm a fan of this guy or I want this guy to win. Um, and you're a fan of them if you follow them like forever, how long you, how, however long you do, right? The allure of a fighter comes from their record. Take Floyd Mayweather, for example. Floyd is 51 and 0. Floyd being that 51 and 0 record, the fact that he is so good and that he's never lost a fight is a huge part of his appeal, right? Now, obviously, you know, if you're black or you're African American, that also plays a part in it too, because you can look to him as like a role model or whatever, you, uh, you know, just black excellence in general. That's that's something different. But what I'm talking about is purely the the, the technical expertise of a fighter, just purely that their their pure combat instinct, and the fact that Floyd has never lost a fight in his professional boxing career, that is a huge testament to his appeal and what makes him, you know, that that's what makes him as a fighter. Now, if I were to take it out from real life and put it to anime and manga, look at Hajime no Ippo. Takamura in Hajime no Ippo hasn't lost a fight yet. And although Takamura has, you know, a fairly... Um, he, he has a backstory in the past that's fairly like problematic or that causes him some sort of stress and whatnot. That's not the that's not the main thing that I'm thinking about when I'm going and looking at him like the, the, the latest fight that he had with Keith Dragon in the manga. I wasn't thinking about all that and I'm saying like, yeah, Takamura, I'm so happy for Takamura, right? When I saw Takamura fight Keith the Dragon in the in, in the current fight that just finished in Hippo, I was just thinking about his strength. Takamura's strength adds to the charisma of his character. And so him winning all his fights in Nippo is the major core part of his character. That's what he's about. And ultimately, that's how his character is written. That's what makes his character great. The fact that you made this character so strong is what makes Takamura a well-written character. You see what I'm saying? It, it's up to his charisma. It's up to his likability. It's up to his strength. It's up to his role in the, you know, in the entire story. So basically what I'm trying to get at is Another thing that I'm trying to get at is also is that if a character is constantly on a losing streak in this kind of fighting series, then for me, generally speaking, I'm saying generally, I'm not saying this is 100% true or this is always the case, but generally speaking, I'm probably going to like a character in a battle series that, you know, can actually win over someone that, you know, is just constantly losing all the time, right? And I'm going to bring up two characters now. One is uh, Genos in One Punch Man, because... Every fight this guy gets in is he, he 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 starts to fight and then he loses, or he gets severely hurt and he barely if ever wins on his own. And the other was Vegeta in the Dragon Ball uh, or in the Dragon Ball in, in yeah in DB in the original series at least right. Um, Vegeta lost a lot in the original DB right. And what made it even worse for Vegeta is that Vegeta lost, but he was talking trash, like as though he was like this great guy and like he was like the strong person and he should be feared and respected but he constantly talked all this shit only to lose in the end and granted that is that is that is part of the point right part of the point part of the thing if you look at vegeta as an anti-hero compared to virgil and devil may cry or shadow the hedgehog and sonic or even sasuke and naruto or even hiei and yui hakusha whoever those anti-heroic quote-unquote anti-heroic characters right they actually were able to win fights on their own and um not then that too competitive fights, right? But Vegeta, on the other hand, especially in the Namek arc, would always use underhanded con uh, conniving tactics to win. And like, for example, when he kills a pool, that's not even a fight, right? But in the case of someone like Kui, you know, he beats him straight up. Against Zarbon, he loses, but he avenges that loss. He kills Dodoria on his own, right? But then he loses to Rakum, then he loses to Frieza. He kills 19, then he loses to 18, then he loses to Cell. And that's kind of like... Those consecutive losses and that shit talking, at least at that part of the point, at that part of the story in Dragon Ball before the Boo arc, made me not like him as much as say someone like Piccolo or Goku or Gohan or even Trunks at that point, right? Because those characters were actually capable of standing on their own feet, two feet, and pulling out a win in a fairly decisive manner. And although Vegeta beat Goku in the first fight, in their first fight in the Saiyan arc. He still ran away at the end like a coward, right? He was still doing like all this, you know, uh, underhanded conniving shit, and uh, that's what I'm really talking about when I when I when I'm talking about a character's strength and their win loss record, right? Is the fact that 
you have like this this manly gar like sense to just stand up and not use any dirty tricks and still win. Now that's not to say that I don't appreciate that stuff. I do. In fact, part of the likability of Vegeta on the Namek arc was him being that underhanded and conniving. That shit was actually like I mean it's 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 not morally, you know, right or anything like that, but that added to like the the appeal of that character in that particular phase, right? But when you go to something like the Androids arc and he's saying like, Oh, I'm the Prince of All Saiyans once again or whatever he said in the dub and um you know he beats 19 and then he gets owned by 18 almost immediately that kind of just kills all the hype you see what i'm saying and so what does that have to do with genos and one punch man he's kind of similar he doesn't have the shit talking that vegeta did right but at least i can appreciate the guy the fact that this guy tries all the time but even though that's likable and again i'm talking about things say like personality now right i'm factoring things like personality and stuff into these into the actions of the care into the actions of the character but in the case of Genos, even though he tries all this stuff, in the end, he still loses. And again, like in a fighting series like One Punch Man, that, at least for me, that just makes his all his efforts futile. And um, I would much rather be the, be a fan, not that I would much rather be a fan, not that I'm trying to like be a fan of a character in particular, but it's more so like the what a character actually accomplishes in a fighting series like that. When you are a fighting character... Is extremely important right and so genos doing that um genos you know even though he tries a lot even though he's you know very he even though he's not as acerbic or as evil a character as vegeta was in dbz early on ultimately in the end he still loses a lot of fights and to me that just contributes to his character not being as likable as someone like saitama for example that's not saying i don't like those characters right I'm just saying that I don't like them as much as other characters who are capable of getting shit done on their own. You see what I'm saying? So, um, you know, even someone like uh, Bang in One Punch Man, I like more than Genos. Even someone like Bomb, uh, Bang's brother, I like more than Genos, you know? So, um, and again, this just, this doesn't just extend to the strength of a character, it can extend to anything, really. It doesn't, ha it doesn't even really have to be a, a battle series, whether it's their win-loss record or their strength. It can be about something... I, I don't watch Shokugeki no Soma, right? I don't watch Shoku Shokugeki no Soma, or I don't, I don't watch... Um, what was that What was that uh, biking anime that came out years ago or something? I think it was... Excuse me. Um, Amagi Brilliant Park, the cycling manga, I think that's what it was called. And then there was a swim swimming manga called Free. Um, anything that really has any sort of like com uh, competition in it. It can extend to that, right? Um, it's their proficiency and mastery of whatever whatever craft they are in that can up their charisma, and that that contributes to the writing of the character, right? Because you have improved the charisma of that character, and charismatic characters are likable, right? You like a character because there is either something relatable or they're just charismatic. There's something there that you like about them, and um, I want to bring up this example now of Lupin the Third. Right, Lupin the Third. You know, you have Lupin, you have Jigen, you have Goemon, you have Fujiko. These guys are all masters at what they do. Lupin is a master thief and a fairly good, you know, gunslinger. Jigen is the best gunslinger in the world. Goemon is a strong ass samurai who fucking in a, in a world full of guns and tech and all this stuff uses his fucking sword to just slay everyone and anything. And Fujiko is a fucking great ass thief too, right? But would you like these characters as much if they weren't as good at what they do? As they are currently and I would say the answer is no I would say the answer is no and again please don't misunderstand what I'm saying I am not saying that the strength and the strength of a character is the only reason or the only well it can be the only reason for someone to like someone and I'll get to that a little later but what I am saying is that um, you know of course other things like the like of the personality of a character the behavior of a character those can not should or will but those can contribute to the writing of a character or the likability of a character. Uh, the likability of a character. But what I am also saying is that the mastery and how good it, they are at what they do is also definitely very important, right? And that leads into what I was going to say next. Any reason to like any character, right? Any reason under the sun to like any character is not more valid or wrong than any other reason from any other person. And Basically, what I mean by that is, if you look at if you look at a character, say like Naruto, right? Okay, if you like Naruto because 
um, you know, uh, the, the loss of his parents, right? The fact that Minato and Kushina died was such a, I don't know, it was such a, um, uh, it was such a sad experience and that's why you like him. That's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody on the internet or in public. There is no reason for you to, you, you shouldn't seek validation for your liking of a character or, or anything really, not even just a character, anything from anyone else, from just some random stranger, you know, on the internet or on Twitter or, or whoever. That shit don't matter. It doesn't, you, you, they, no one is there to tell you like why your reason is less valid or less important than another reason, right? So if you like Naruto for that, that's fine. If another guy came in and said, I like Naruto because his his hair is blonde and his shirt is orange, that's perfectly fine too. If that's what makes him your favorite character, that's fine, dude. That There is no reason for you to seek validation from anyone. From anyone. On, on, why, your, on why your reason is correct or not. That's a perfectly fine reason to like a character. It is. And the idea that because that because him losing his parents is a more painful and traumatic uh, experience, the re the the argument that that is much more personal and it you know it messes with your heart more and that you know that reason should be taken more seriously, that's all bullshit. That's all bullshit. You have nothing to prove to anyone. You can like a re you can like a character for any god. You can like anything under the goddamn sun for any fucking goddamn reason. And that's just how it is. That's just the way it is. Being, and again, yeah, that's, you know, being emotionally bonded to a character's pain or trauma does not make their character better in terms of writing. And it does not make their reason for liking that character more valid. And this, this is the other direction that this video is going to go and the other topic that I was thinking about. Where people say, like, good writing or character development comes from a character's backstory or a character's reasoning or whatnot. And, you know, I, again, I'm 27, I'm 28 years old now. I'm 28. And there's people younger than me that are much more into anime. They, they make up the quote unquote, the anime fandom, if you will. Right. And which I was a part of too, when I first joined, when I was in college, when, you know, I got on in 2012, 2013, I was what, 19, 20 years old. And I started trying to make videos and talking with people on YouTube and whatnot. That's straight too, right? But I, the the common thing that I always, you know, now that I'm looking at looking back on it, the thing that I found was that people always thought that good character development and good character writing came from a character undergoing some sort of traumatic experience, and pain and trauma is not the same thing as character development. Now, pain and trauma can certainly uh, develop some empathy you know, in the reader or the watcher, and they can make you be empathetic or sympathetic to that character. And you can certainly like that character because you feel for their pain. And just like what I was saying with the orange shirt and the yellow hair and, you know, what I was saying with Naruto's parents, that's per perfectly fine too. It's perfectly re okay for you to like a character because of their their pain and their trauma. But I think the problem that I, that I see now is that everyone that I talk to, for the most part, their favorite character is because they, they, they're going through some painful experience. And so pain seems to be the, the root and the cause for someone liking a character more so than someone who hasn't gone through that pain or someone who hasn't gone through any sort of traumatic experience. And to me, I think that's just bullshit because that doesn't see, that doesn't, you know what that tells me? That tells me that people just go, they don't go to reading, they don't go to anime or manga or they don't play a game for the sake of enjoying themselves. They go, they go to that for the sake of, feeling sad and wanting to feel depressed and that's just that's not the essence of writing that's not the essence of fiction or, or or creation or whatever it is that you want to make right you it's a it's perfectly okay for you to make your audience feel those things it's perfect it's even if the author is not trying to make his audience feel that it's perfectly okay for you to feel that but the problem that i have is that this seems to be the common thought now you know this character must be has some sort sort of sad backstory or this sort of traumatic experience for him to be considered a well-written character, which is not the fucking case. Not the fucking case. There's got to be some sadness in this guy's life, otherwise I can't like him. Fuck all that. Any if you think like that, if you truly think like that, get your like donate your brain to science or something because you need to or better yet, 
never have sex or never have children. I know I'm being like very dramatic by saying that, but I'm I'm serious, man. Like that shit is not that is not the basis of good writing. Now, everything that I've been saying about strength and win loss and you know battle series and all this stuff. Um, what about weak characters? Um, am I uh, with with all that I've said? Am I saying that weak characters should be ranked lower because they are not strong characters? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that a character's strength and a win-loss record is important. I am saying it is important, especially in series that are battle-oriented, because at the end of the day, these things are leading up to fights. And this leads into the, the motion of the plot, and those things are important. Right? Um, but should they be ranked lower because they are not strong? No, that's not what I'm saying. Everything I just said, you can like a character for any goddamn reason under the sun. The point that I was trying to make was that if you like a character just because they are strong, that is perfectly okay. That's fine. That doesn't make your <laughs> that doesn't make your reason less valid than someone who likes a character because you know they, I don't know they they got divorced from their wife and then their son died and they drank themselves into alcoholism and now they're trying to you know, find their way in life, you know, you, 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 you see how easy I thought of that, like, in a, like, in a minute, that, 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 that's, that's the point I'm, I'm trying to get at, you know, anyway, uh, what was I saying about weak characters, yeah, so what about weak characters, should they be ranked lower because they're not strong, no, look at me, uh, I like someone like, you know, in Dragon Ball Z, for example, I like someone like the Grand Elder, or Bulma's dad, or, uh, the, the, the cat on Bulma's dad, uh, Scratch, I like Poir, I like all these characters more than I do Broly, or Kula, or Jace, or, 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 I don't know, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Tullus, you know, characters that can actually fight, and characters that actually got shit done, right, and again, there's so many, there are many things that go into liking a character, right, there are many things that go into liking a character besides their win-loss record, but what I'm trying to accomplish with this video is, I'm trying to dismiss the notion that a win-loss record doesn't matter, or that the character being strong doesn't matter, that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, it especially matters in battle-oriented series like this. Now, it may not be the only reason. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's the only reason, but I am saying it is. I, in, at least for me, it's 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 an important thing. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, that's basically, yeah, it's basically it, really. Um, and again, you know, I'm that doesn't mean pain slash trauma isn't a way to like a character, but. I'm kind of tired of the this whole discourse that it's the only way to find a character well written or for you to like a character. And certainly pain and trauma is not what separates that particular character from someone who hasn't undergone who hasn't undergone any sort of pain or as deep a trauma as, you know, them. So I, I again, I I hate that whole argument. I think it's bullshit and um I get, yeah, I guess, you know, this video is going longer than it should be. But I guess in short, if you like a character just because they're strong, that's okay. You know, being strong is what gives that character charisma and just makes them fucking cool and awesome at the end of the day. And that's all we want when we read something or watch something. We just want to be entertained. That's the, at the end of the day, that's what it is. We want entertainment. More than any sort of sob story or whatever it is, we just want to be entertained and we want to enjoy ourselves while we're watching a movie or playing a game. Excuse me. And yeah, a character being strong is what makes them attractive. Now, I don't mean, I mean, if you find, if you think a character's strength is sexually attractive, whatever, you know, that's one thing for sure. But when I say, what I mean when I say attractive is um, likable, right? A character being strong is what makes them likable. Just like a character being funny makes them likable. Just like a character looking cool makes them likable. Just like a character being a good person makes them likable, you know? And again, looking for some sad past or trauma in this character is not the only way or the best way. To make someone like them. Um, though, again, like I said, it's certainly a valid reason to like that character. But, yeah, anyway, this, this video has been going longer than it should have. I, I, I just wanted to make this video about uh, why a character's win-loss record and why their strength can matter. And why, you know, you shouldn't be so beholden and so keen to latch yourselves onto some character that has undergone some sort of pain or trauma. So... Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching, and um, yeah, I'll see you when I see you. Take care.